so far everything uh, clear not so complex maybe not really fun but okay um, so let's continue with these JavaScript basics uh, and probably all, all the people that know new JavaScript already uh, I'm, I'm sorry you will be probably boring for, for you this part but resist um, have patience uh, wh one question that I received both two twice during the, the break was can we have uh, groups for the big lab mixed between this course and the other English course uh, and the answer is unfortunately not mm -hmm. so you have to create groups here in this course and they have to create groups there I know that is just an alphabetical split but we actually so the courses are aligned but a, a, all of us is grading the, pro the, the project is conducting the groups etc managing everything individually and we, we we agree on the content we agree on the exam text we agree on the way we should um, grade things but then the actual work is done individually se separately among the three courses mm? so this was uh, since I two of you uh, ask this question I, I prefer to to reply to everybody also in the recording uh, so back to JavaScript uh, types and variable mm? so JavaScript as you have probably probably seen in this two example that I have made quickly on the browser uh, is a language where variables don't have types but values have types so what it means means that this picture represent the relationship between values and type in JavaScript so while a variable doesn't have a specific type the variable a could be in one moment be a number then a string then an array then whatever else and then back to a number mm. in the moment in which a specific value is assigned to uh, a variable that variable assume a specific time that is temporary that is binded uh, connected to the specific value you put inside the variable and in JavaScript you have two mm, categories let's say of values one are the primitive values and the other one are the objects so the primitive values uh, are string and you can see here three different ways in which string can be defined with double quotes single quotes and this other um, quote hmm? the last one here then you have numbers integer numbers floating point numbers numbers mm -hmm. then you have boolean true and false written with without a capital letter and then you have two other primitive values one is null and the other is undefined mm -hmm. and then you have object mm -hmm. you have object real object so dictionary in other programming language map you have arrays you have functions that are object so start listening to these function are objects and also you can have user defined objects classes mm? let's say let's say classes mm? actually JavaScript is not a class based language so we use classes but they are not really classes hmm? they are prototype but you can build object complex object hmm? like struct in C in C hmm? so object with something custom inside hmm? so these are a map of all the possible values either primitive or not primitive that you can have hmm? in JavaScript and we are going to to use at a certain point uh, all of these all of these uh, before moving to an example uh, just to not to stay on slides for another hour uh, just um, a consideration on boolean and true and false so in JavaScript 
we don't have so we we say that uh, so while boolean are clearly true and false as a value we say that uh, things could be true phi or false c so not totally true but not totally false neither uh, because you, we have a series of values that are false c so c quasi false uh, or interpreted as false so zero is false minus zero that exists is false not a number if in a comparison is evaluated as false uh, undefined and null are false but even the empty string is considered false so if you have a boolean expression and you have an empty string that is part of false condition uh, vice versa everything else is true is truthy mm? so almost true so a number is true a string not empty is true an empty array is true and an empty object that again in other languages you probably call it um, dictionary or maps is true it's true fee mm? so keep in mind these when, when you have to evaluate boolean condition boolean expression keep in mind this if there is an empty string that counts as false but if the string is not empty that counts as true mm? so there are these things to, to consider and in uh, javascript we have two ways of comparing things boolean comparison one is the double equal and the other one is the triple equal and the difference, so both compare. But the triple equal is similar to the comparison that you are used to in other language. So six as a number is equal to six as a number, because they actually are a number and they are six, both. A string uh, with hello is the same is equal to a string identical with a law because they are the same thing mm -hmm. uh, and this is the triple equal the double equal do the same comparison but convert types mm -hmm. so that means that you can say if uh, six as a number is equal with the double equal with six as a string, so with written as a number, but as a string, the results will be, yes, they are true. Six as a number and six as a string are the same. Mm? So this is the double equal. Mm? Perform a conversion. Mm? So if you compare a string as a number and inside a string, there is a number that are both compared, both, both uh, converted in the same type and then compared. So, it's always, if you want to do a real comparison, it's always preferred to use the triple equal mm, to avoid, well, why this is true? Oh, well, because this string at a certain point becomes a number, contains a number that happens to be equal to the other number. And, and since variables doesn't have a strict type, but change type according to the value uh, they have in, this can lead in some cases to problem. So in some cases, it's actually useful to have a double equal because you maybe won't accept this conversion. In other cases, you want to have the standard expected behavior of comparison for which a string and a number are not equal, even if the content of the string is equal to the content of a number. Hmm? Yeah. that's a good question uh, I don't remember to be honest um, I I would say that is compared in a number this translating a number mm. so mm, but not totally sure but they are in any case uh, translated to the same converted to the same value and then doing the comparison 
and in most cases it doesn't really probably matter because if you compare two numbers or two strings with the same value inside uh, it's it's the same uh, so if we look at this table this graph I would say that are converted in a string uh, because I think that we did this right uh, as the so they tried to be converted to, to the other one but not sure I can check if you if you're curious but I don't remember now um, any other question okay so let's speak about variables uh, let me open Visual Studio Code so let's try not to speak thing on a no did you use Visual Studio Code ever who never used Visual Studio Code never okay so let me put it like this and bigger do you see or bigger the text it's fine okay so uh, yes, uh, a brief overview of Visual Studio Code. Um, well, when you open Visual Studio Code, you have a text editor in which you can type whatever text you want. Um, then there are these six uh, icons here. One is for Folder Explorer. Uh, the other one is for Search inside the project, inside the file. Uh, the other one is for Version Control, uh, so Operation for Version Control. Uh, the other one is uh, a tab that is open mm, for run and debugging mm, where you can have additional information for run and debugging uh, well maybe you don't have this uh, I don't know this is a remote explorer to connect with the studio code with a remote computer and to open a folder in auto computer and and then the last one is a store for extension and so you can install plugin in Visual studio code support more uh, of the languages of the feature that Visual Studio Code has and and here on the on the bottom of the page you see which is the language currently recognized by the editor so when you open the editor the language is plain text the type of the file is plain text you just write text uh, I'm going to open hmm, I we have a folder on github that's called hmm, something weeks Mm. So uh, application web one, MZ, uh, KZ, uh, week, weeks, in which we have, in which we will have one folder for each week of this exercise. So all, all these things that we are going to do, we are going to put it on GitHub. So I, I cloned, I had this folder on my computer. So I'm going to, to open it. Uh, typically, it's always good to open a folder and work inside a folder so that you have all the files together and if you have also shared configuration is all visible inside the IDE and inside the folder mm -hmm. so this here week one in which I created an empty file actually mm -hmm. uh, that's called hello JavaScript mm -hmm. so in this in this file you see here opening the JavaScript file it changed from plain text to JavaScript mm -hmm. so Visual Studio Code recognize whether is which is the the language and you can change it if you click on it it gives you options um, but since it has extension JS is a JavaScript file uh, and then you can increase zoom whatever but we can you can also have the terminal here for which you can run the application uh, we have two ways to run a JavaScript a node.js application here here I just installed node.js and Visual Studio Code nothing else mm? this is what we need now uh, we have two ways to run the application one is through the um, run menu and run either with the bug or without the bug um, these will show the output in one of the tabs here mm? here in, in the page uh, with node.js sometimes the console showing the results is not really 
um, precise or update. So it happens that maybe you do some result, you, you have to print something and it print it while a little bit later than needed or in a compacted way, more visual, visual way, or the errors are condensed, compacted. And so you don't see the full error, just uh, a short message without the debugging. Um, so the other way for which you can see all, hmm, the, the, the entire execution uh, with all the messages of errors, lengthy, etc., is to run it from the terminal, hmm, from the command prompt that is embedded in uh, Node.js. This is in um, Visual Studio Code. This is the terminal of macOS. If you're running it on Windows, you see uh, a different terminal, clearly. Um, but oh, you to run uh, a Node a JavaScript application, you can write Node and then the name of the file to run. So node hello.javascript, press enter, and it executes the program. So right now it doesn't do anything because it's basically an empty file. Hmm? But we we can do something. Hmm? So here, let's delete this start here. That is not really useful. And let's speak about variables. Hmm? So in JavaScript there are four ways to declare to declare variables uh, you can say and um, one of them forget it and the second one another one of them mostly and use two of them so the two of them that are good are this one and i will explain to you why and which is the difference so you can define the variable in JavaScript with this keyword, let name of the variable equal, if needed, a value that is inserted in the variable in that moment, mm -hmm. allocated to the variable. So a let e a equal five, it's creating a variable called a and put five in the variable. Mm -hmm. Pretty easy. Uh, all, all the stuff are also in the slides, just to, to do something different. Uh, the other way to define a variable is use this const keyword. And then the syntax is the same. Const name of the variable equal number. Mm -hmm. And they are different. They are not really the same. And then there are other two ways. One to forget and the other one never to have seen before. One, the one to forget is this. That is the old way of defining variable before let and const. That is same structure. Keyword, name of the variable, equal value. Mm? That is var. Mm? And then there is another way to define variable that is this one. Without keyword, just the name of the variable. Mm? So the, the, the first two are the recent ones that were introduced to avoid the problems that the other two has. And they behave like, let's say, variables that you can define in probably any other programming language of this kind. Um, so let me save this. Um, the other two are more uh, older way of defining variable Actually, the last one, hmm, if you use, uh, com as we said, strict mode, hmm, we should always start our file with strict mode. Actually, the last one doesn't work. It's not acceptable in strict mode. Hmm. It's an option that is disabled in strict mode. Know that exists, if you find some documentation with variable declaring the way they are valid in JavaScript 20 years ago, 30 years ago, hmm? and then you know that exists, uh, let's delete it. Um, the other three are working. Um, var hmm, allow you to do this, so let's, let's see if they are working for real. So console.log a 
let's print them out b and c just let's print this value so let's check if they are working and you see we see five six seven so they are working as expected uh, but every time that you see var or want to type var just type let three letters same change just write let because var allow you to do this nice thing here i can use a variable i can even add change the value of the variable before declaring it so actually c is declared here line 8 but again assign a value to c to bar c in line 2 and print the value in line 3 so this is why just don't use var this is a feature of javascript that it could be powerful if used well maybe not with variables but other uh, aspects this is called hoisting the fact that you can use something before declaring it and this apply to var but also apply to other things in javascript like function mm -hmm. so if we run these uh, in theory you see eight five six and in strict mode we don't have the other variable the variables without keyword so you can actually declare a variable, use a variables before declaring it. And if you have 10 lines, probably it's not a problem. If you have a larger program, more complex, you need to remember, oh, this variable, I defined it before, it was another things, etc. So it, it will bring to problems. So every time you see var, just write let. And with let, this doesn't happen. This should not happen. I saved the, I didn't save the file. Okay, yeah, I didn't save the file, thanks. It doesn't happen. As you see now, um, and you see the message, line two, C equal eight, the message is cannot access the variable named C before its initialization, before its declaration. Clearly, you define the variable line eight, why you are going to use it line two. Hmm? So this independently from the strict mode, this is something that let and cost doesn't, const doesn't allow you to do. So they behave like other normal, let's say, variables that you uh, have met so far. So again, var is totally valid as a syntax because JavaScript is backward compatible. But when you see var or you copy and paste code with var, just put let. That will avoid these and similar problems. But again, this mechanism is called hoisting. H-O-I-S-T. I and G. It's written in slides, by the way. Um, this fact of using something before initialization. So let's fix this, this error because clearly we, we cannot have a program running this way. Okay, and let's save. Um, so now it should. run without any problem hmm? so which is the difference between let and const as the name say uh, const is more of let's say is behaving like a constant value hmm? so while i can write so let's get okay let's keep that 
uh, way I can write a equal um, hello and if I run this you see that this is eight hello six I cannot do the same thing for B There is an error that say assignment to a constant variable. So let allow you to create variables and you can change the value inside the variable at any time, how many time you want. Const is creating a constant variable. Sort of a constant variable. So with primitive um, Values it working as a constant variable, at least. And we are seeing here another, well, type of uh, value that are string. Mm? So I'm using hello as another hello are strings. Mm? Start, uh, we can start it with a single or a double quote. You can choose. Uh, I will typically try to use a single quote as per the Google style guide that I mentioned before, but you can freely choose the other and just be consistent inside a file. So just don't mix single and double quotes in a single file without any reason. So let's also experiment with the comparison just to see. So we can put um, five. We can do the example that we did before. Um, so let's also comment this. Uh, so we can say if a equal equal b. console.log equal are equals so we are also introducing uh, the if statement mm -hmm. that works like any other probably if statement that you have encountered in other C-like programming language if keyword condition to evaluate with true fee or falsy parentheses, new line, block of code that is inside the, the if and then close parentheses. Mm -hmm. So if A equal or equal to B, then A, B and equals. So in this case, we are going to see A, B are equals or not. Yes. Because five is a number, five is a string, but there is conversion, and then they are equals. Mm -hmm. And I already said that I should use a single quote. Don't mix it, like I did, uh, for string. Mm -hmm. So if we want to use the triple equal, mm -hmm. instead we are going to see we are not going to see the message because one is a number and the other one is a string and a string is not equal to a number independently from the content so just to remember also this triple equal it's a true comparison also for the value while a double equal is a comparison that converts the content that is in this moment associated to, to the type of the variable let's say this way um, and then since we are speaking about the if uh, you can also have the else 
files console dot log they are not equal and you can also have else if clearly so here you can say else if something condition and then something here as you probably can can expect uh, do, do you all know some this c like syntax yes okay mm -hmm. so nothing strange the, the only characteristic is this double or triple equal mm -hmm. and, and you see also we can compare string with we can compare everything with the equals so we don't have other methods like string dot equals to another value we can say a number is equal to a number yes or no a string is equal to string yes or no with these differences and all these comparisons are made with the double or triple equal mm -hmm. for all the values uh, there is no, no change basically mm -hmm. so let me uh, maybe comment this else if uh, too many well let me delete this else if it doesn't matter mm. so if i run this again mm, now it say they are not equal because we are using the triple equal so all of these, just to give you a reference, uh, is here. Mm? So you see there are the four type of def defining a uh, variable, whether you can reassign it or not. So you see for const, you cannot reassign the value because it's a constant uh, with some changes. Uh, so it's written prevent a reassignment const but not changing the value of the referred object so it's constant up to a certain point then it can also change um, you can redeclare this variable no you can redeclare a variable with var so you can write var name of the variable at a certain point in the code var name of the variable and that redeclare entirely the variable not to reuse just to redeclare the variable another good reason not to use var um, then there is the scope that we are going to see in a moment the hoisting mm, that things that we have seed uh, you have seen uh, with var you have hoisting just to the beginning of the, of the file with none mm, without specifying var let declaring variables in that way uh, the hoisting is global you can use a variable declared in another file even if the other file is not yet loaded it's not yet executed because it's the parser that analyzes everything before the execution hmm? so the last one as i said is forbidden in a strict mode if you try to use it in strict mode it give you an error uh, var is legacy try not to use if possible but it's backward compatible so it's still here the preferred ways modern ways of using javascript is declaring variables with let and const mm? and here you also have a definition of hoisting but basically is what uh, is what's said mm? and this ap uh, apply not only to to variables in javascript mm? um, so uh, a few things about numbers i already told you that there is no distinction between integer and uh, real numbers they are just numbers um, and also in this case there is the automatic conversion according to the operation so if you have an uh, integer number and a floating point number and you need to, to produce a number uh, to, to perform a division the results will be floating point mm -hmm. so the integer number is converted to floating point and then mm, the results will be floating point automatically using the division sign uh, 
there is also a so the integer is not so big uh, there is also a big int but it's really re it's more recent it's not fully supported everywhere that is called big int that can be uh, can be representing of two elevated 53 numbers so it really present a lot of numbers and when you want to use this big int if the JavaScript engine support it because it's July 2020 uh, you have to write the number with the suffix n so one is one normal integer one n is an integer represented on this very big set of numbers just in case if you need a really really big integer to store a really big integer yeah No, it tried to, to convert and use the right format. So if you have an integer and then use it in a floating point operation, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what you mean for converting a variable because uh, we don't have a type, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. If you use a double equal, it will be converted in floating point. I would say broad floating point in this case. Um, if you use the double equal, it try to, sorry, triple equal, it will be different. Um, okay, and then there are, well, we, again, we are going to, to say all this because we are facing um, JavaScript as a programming language on the web it will happen very very rarely that we have to, to manage numbers and the operation because we are more interested in you know building a graphical user interface for a website with buttons and logic behind that where probably we mostly uh, interchange strings maybe some numbers but not very complex operation at least on the front end but yes uh, and then we, we have some special values uh, one is well null mm, that is an empty value in JavaScript mm. uh, so both null and uh, und und undefined are called nullish value because they are similar to null mm. but then we have null that represent an empty value mm. a variable with nothing in it undefined is instead a variable that is declared but not initialized so it's not empty it's just declared mm -hmm. um, so let name of the variable semicolon that variable as type undefined because it has nothing in it mm -hmm. if you want to give a value that is an empty value but not a number not a string etc you can write let name of the variable equal null in that moment null is the empty value of the variable mm -hmm. and both are clearly nullish value in this sense uh, and then there is this other special value that is not a number an a n that is actually a number but it's called not a number um, so it's represented as a number um, but it has a special value and it's printed and write it as an a n mm, in that way uh, and this is typically the results that came out from uh, arithmetic operation or parsing operation that needs number mm -hmm. so if you try to do a sum between hello and five the results will probably be not a number because you cannot mm -hmm. sum a, a string with letters and a number with real numbers sorry they will try to uh, convert it with a double equal 
uh, in a comparison, but if you compare hello as a string and six as a number, they will not be the same in any case because one is a number and the other one is a word. Undefined n and zero. Uh, it's, it's the same because undefined and zero are falsy, are both falsy. So they are, they will produce false independently from, from the comparison in this case. Um, well, variables are for references, uh, et cetera. We already have seen this. Oh, okay, scope. So scope is a concept that here is, is quite um, not strong because we, we cannot just simulate the scope here, but uh, it's a property of many things in JavaScript. Uh, so for, you see there is a column here, it's called scope. Uh, for Latin's and uh, const, the scope of the variable is the enclosing block. Uh, for var is the enclosing function or global, it depends, and for anything else, the, score, the scope is global. Mm? What does it mean, the scope? Mm? So let's use this example. So use strict, we are in strict mode, we are defining two variables, one with let, one with const, and then an another variable with uh, let, one, two, true. And then we are going to define again let e a equal five. And we know from here that we cannot redeclare a let variable because let a is already a variable declared here. So we cannot really redeclare here. We can write a equal five reassign another value to the same variable, but not to redeclare the variable with, with let. Um, so if we create a new scope that is done in this way, with this parenthesis, and this is not the way in which we typically create a scope. So it's possible to create a new scope in this way inside a program, but in practice you don't do it almost never. Uh, but hmm, a scope is um, something between hmm, two graphs parentheses. In a function, you have a scope. Because in a function declaration, you have a scope. Hmm, because you create a new scope inside the, the function. But we, we don't know function yet. So we just, uh, with, with variables, we can declare a scope in this way. Hmm. So in this way, so and this scope here, is called block. So everything within two graph, graph parentheses are, is called block. Mm -hmm. And Latin costs are blocked scoped, means that their scope exists only within the current scope, doesn't exist outside of the scope. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have this, the scope is just the global scope the start of the file. So if you declare something here, you cannot redeclare really here, here, because you are in the same scope. That is the global scope. But if you create a new scope in some way, let's this, this is a valid way to create a scope, but not common again. But if you create a new scope, you can redefine the same variable. Let A equal five. And this is not an error. If we try to copy and paste this in a Visual Studio Code, this is fine because let and const cannot be redeclared within their scope. But here we are in a different scope. So we can redeclare it if we want. Hmm? So both const and, less, L and let are um, block scoped and as a scope, have a scope that is defined by the block containing them. So again, you cannot do this. It will give you an error, a syntax error. You cannot redefine a variable already defined with let, but you can do this. Inside a new scope, you can reuse all the, redeclare all the variables that you want, no matter, because they are, 
it's it's like to be in another file hmm? in another context keep in mind this idea of scope because it will be um, fun to handle let's say fun to handle when we are going to have objects and functions and all these things there hmm? not for variables for for other assets um, Uh, here there is another example in which we have also the hoisting of var hmm? because here we have a var variable but uh, it's the same um, thing so you see here b have a look at b uh, we have this well it's a function but we have this console log b and this give an error because b is not defined at that point and b we know that b is a let variable here hmm? so it's not defined at that point uh, here we define b and since this is a scope we are inside parentheses so this is a scope it is an if but we are inside parentheses b and c sorry b exist only here after this if b is cheese to exist and so here again gives the same error b is not defined because b exists only inside that if because this is a scope that is different from the larger scope. Hmm? Uh, this thing doesn't happen with C because C is defined with var. Var as a global scope or uh, the file scope. And so with hoisting, it can be either printed before and after. Printed before and without hoisting, it can be printed after. So this is scoping of variables. Okay. So before moving to expression, uh, I would like to show you uh, what happens with const. So we said that we cannot uh, change the value of a, con of a const object. Uh, C equals six. We cannot do this. Because this is constant. If we run this also here, if it works, you see assignment to constant variable. It's an error, and we cannot, as expected, reassign a value. Uh, to C as a variable but if we are defining an array and then we are saying that this thing here so we are not reassigning the entire variable we are just changing one element in that variable that is an array or an object not something primitive this is should be well where is this you see no errors here and you see that the array after the execution of both line as six to three so it's const because it cannot you cannot replace everything you cannot write c equal another totally different array or c equal a number or c equal whatever but you can change even if it const the content of a non-primitive value so object arrays etc doesn't work with string it doesn't work with numbers and so on. So that's why I told you that is const sort of const because it's const in general, but you can change something in within when it's not a primitive value. Uh, expression, well, operators. There are uh, a little bit uh, quick on this. There are all the operators you can imagine. 
for doing uh, uh, operation. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have the assignment that is made with the single equal, and so you can declare something and then reassign something. Uh, there is, mm, if you see here, you can do plus equal if you want to do instead of writing variable equal the same variable plus one you can write variable plus equal one so as as in other languages same things with the other mathematical operation so there is uh, the same set probably that you may imagine from any other programming language of this of this style uh, there is the comparison operators uh, we already saw so this the double equal uh, the the not equal exclamation mark equal uh, the triple equal that is called strict equal mm? so the double equal is called equal the triple equal is called strict equal and doesn't do conversion and there is also the strict not equal mm? that is exclamation mark double equal mm? that works the same way it doesn't do the, the conversion the greater lesser than the greater equal less less and equal that all the things that you can can imagine um, uh, the, the comparison well between object we, we we are going to see object on Thursday but the comparison with object compares the reference to the object so they are true mm, only if they are the same object and this apply also with the double equal uh, and if false if they are identical language if are if are not uh, if you are uh, sorry yeah if they're not the same object hmm? independent of the type um, and the comparison with without the single the, all the other comparison minor major uh, try to convert the object so it works like um, a double equal in that sense and so be careful when you use it to to um, with, with object because uh, it tried to convert the object to something else. Oh, so you see here, it tried to convert object typically more likely to a string. So there is a preference to serialize the object in a string and sometimes also in the number, but it's, it's the engine that has some optimization mechanism to decide what to convert in. Also for object. Um, oh, okay, here we are, the answer to the question. How which what works the conversion? Mm. So uh, JavaScript tried to apply type conversion between primitives before everything else, um, and then we know that some construct will force the conversion. So double equal apply the conversion, triple equal does not apply, and you can also do a specific conversion. Mm. So you can. If you have any type, there is a method it's called to string that force the conversion to a string. Mm. Um, if you do a number plus an uh, empty string, that is the number converted in a string. So here there are some, some examples. Mm. Uh, but you see, strings can be converted to numbers, number can be converted to string according to what is more uh, convenient in that moment for that operation. Uh, any type is likely to be converted to a string before, but if needed, it can also be converted to a number. And it, if needed, I mean, there is a function that you call to explicitly convert something in another value or implicitly, like the double equal, this JavaScript to convert the things in another way. And you can also convert any type in Boolean with the true fee and false C rules. So zero is false, undefined is false, three is true, etc. Uh, either explicitly or not. Uh, and Booleans can be also converted in number, where true is one and false is zero. Hmm? So these either are forced by you with some methods like to string or uh, an addition between a number and an empty string that will give you um, a number in a string, the, the number in a string, mm, uh, and so on. Mm. Uh, and notice already here that this is actually the, the addition sign. So you are making a sum between a number and an empty string and the results will be the number uh, with a string mm. in the string format. It's not concatenation in this case mm. among two strings because one is a number. 
always be careful when handling different types, especially probably outside of the web environments where again, we probably manage mostly strings and simple numbers and object also. Uh, then there are logical operator and or not written double uh, E, um, commercial A, um, with the or and not as a quest, um, exclamation mark. As you expect, um, operator plus addition, if you are two strings, the plus works as a concatenation of strings, decrement minus minus, increase in increment plus plus hmm? so division all, all the the terminology that you will expect from other probably language that you already know uh, there is also an idiom um, you you can write a if you have a variable a and a variable b you can write a or b hmm? that means if a then a else b it's a by default it's a if a is true it's true phi mm -hmm. but if a is false c then the result is b of this expression mm -hmm. you can write it long if a equal double e, tri triple equal true or double equal true then then return a else return b or you can write this also idiomatic expression a or b that means again, if A is true, is true phi, then A otherwise B. Well, mathematical functions, just pick one, just imagine one is probably here or in the documentation. Mm -hmm. And you can use it writing mat point. Mm -hmm. So mat point pi is the pi number. And uh, we have a conditional statement in um, JavaScript if we already saw in the example if uh, that works as you expect with the condition beware is true phi or falsy mm, what those rules mm, um, so undefined is false zero is false minus minus zero is false etc an empty string is false but an empty array is true mm. all these things here uh, and you also have the switch working as you can expect uh, with the difference with other programming language that you can have experience with that the switch the expression of the switch could also be a string it doesn't need to be a number it could be also a string uh, loops you have standard standard loops for variable equal to zero semicolon variable my, um, greater than five no no greater uh, less than five increase the variable and then the block of the body do while you have to do while you have the while do you have the while the normal y you can use break you can use continue as in the other programming language but you have also two special for statement in javascript that we are going to use when we are going to have arrays and object uh, the first one is working for object, not for arrays, for object. For variable in object. For name in list of name, where list of name is an object. Then process the variable, whatever you want. So iterate the variable over the properties of the object, but uh, it works for objects not for arrays if you want to iterate on an array it's for variable of array hmm? for uh, letter of string hmm? where string is an array in this, w in this moment hmm? so iterate for a variable that's called letter in a list of individual letters in a, in array of individual letters mm -hmm. so for in object for of arrays or things that are iterable mm -hmm. so arrays are iterables mm -hmm. these things here for let a of array for seven 
will print four and seven mm, for each item in the array but also for let a of the string high since the string high is iterable will print the single letter of the string one per line mm, console.log print once per line print in a line and then new line uh, when you manage arrays and object it typically in javascript is preferred to use this with respect to the normal for syntax that you have in other languages just remember in for object of for iterable objects or iterable elements um, then quickly on this there are exception try catch finally throw object if you want to throw an exception and there are some exception already defined that are thrown by the language this is the syntax error there is the reference error there is the type error etc we there were one of these in the example before the one that we have seen also in visual studio code were exceptions that were not managed because we didn't have try and catch anywhere in our very simple program Uh, last two topic for today's mm? strings and arrays but this here there is nothing especially for arrays nothing strange with respect to other uh, programming languages mm? so arrays are defined with the the square bracket mm? uh, have a property that's called length that can tell you how big is the array uh, elements in an array in JavaScript doesn't need to be the same type meaning you can mix number with strings in the same array maybe it's not the best choice but you can mm -hmm. uh, and then arrays this is important arrays are some methods that modify the array and some methods modify the array in place so changing the actual content of the array and some other methods modify the array and return a new array so some methods change the array in place some other methods doesn't change the array but give you a new array mm -hmm. and this is, is to be remembered or uh, read in the documentation mm -hmm. so how do you create an array square bracket square bracket empty square bracket with elements separated by a comma or you can use array of mm -hmm. so let be array dot of one to three builds an array like this essentially mm? so build the same array mm? it's just another way to, to write this one use a sort of constructor of the array the other one is the classical let's say uh, method and array starts from zero mm? uh, you can add elements on array just by saying array of number v open square bracket one close square bracket equal the new element to add to the array even if length of the array in this case you see we have an empty array we are adding two elements just by assigning it to an index and length will update accordingly automatically after all the operations so length at the end is two length after inserting this a is one and length at the beginning is zero uh, or you can use push so uh, let's say tra traditional methods or or push mm, with the difference that push is a method that applies to raise another iterable object that adds the value at the end of the array while in this case you can also reassign value or define mm, that now at zero v the zero is another value etc uh, if you want to add at the beginning there is a method that's called unshift push add in the end unshift add at the beginning of the array and, and shift everything uh, move everything forward hmm? so unshift add at the beginning shift remove from the beginning of the array push add in the end pop remove the last element at the end of the array uh, 
uh, well, copying arrays, where is, why this is not working for copying arrays? Yes, because they are copying the references and actually, let's say in, in the proper way, this is, is called assignment, not copy. So actually we are assigning an array to another variable, so we are not copying actually. So it, this produce a copy with a primitive element because the, the value is there, but uh, with an array, this is just an assignment of the reference clearly, as you said, but this is called assignment for a reason, otherwise probably we'll call it copy. Mm? Uh, so if you want to copy an array, you can use array.from. Mm? Array.from, take the array that is passed from and copy it into the destination, that is the variable returning the new array. Mm? And so it creates, actually, the, the array.from from doesn't just copy the array, it's also create array from any object that is iterable. Mm? So it creates also an array starting from a string. Mm? So it creates an array from something. And this something could be an array and that will be produce a copied array or create an array from a string and then will produce an array starting from the content of the string. Mm? The only requirement is that is iterable, like array and strings. Uh, we, are, we, told, we already said that for iterating an array for off, there are other methods, very interesting, that are the functional style that we are going to see um, next week. So, but they are just listed here. We're going to see how to iterate an array in a functional way next week. Uh, then there are methods for concatenating array, joins, joining arrays, reversing an array, sorting an array, getting the index of a specific element in an array, Whatever can you imagine is there is a method for that probably. Hmm? Just clearly, we this is not a, a full list. Hmm? There is documentation for that. And there is that Mo Mozilla website that has all the signature, all the function that could be useful. Hmm? You, you are not requested to remember all of them by memory clearly. Maybe just the more frequent like reverse, sort, uh, concat, join, and so on. Um, with arrays you can also the structuring assignment um, so it means that variables values on the right end of an equal sign so an assignment are extracted and stored in the variable in the left mm -hmm. so with this operation what is the result of this operation the result of this operation is that after this line you will have a variable that is called x that contains number one. And then you have another variable that's called y that contains number two. This is the structuring. And this also, this is particularly useful if you need to swap values. If you have two, two values, you want to just perform the swap, just do like this. Just invert them and they will be the structured on the other side of the um, of the array hmm? and this is particularly useful not only for for uh, for swapping things but also for returning more than one element from a function hmm? so you can either return an object you can either return an array but you can also return these and then keep them in separate variables in the code so if you, you can return an array and then destructure the array in separate variables and keep the variables independent and do whatever you want with the variables. You don't need to keep the array with you forever. You can also choose, I'm interested in the first one and I don't care about the second value that is returned from the function and I just keep the first one and operate like it was just returning that because it's on a variable. Uh, and there is another operator that works with array but not only and so we will uh, meet it again, that is a spread operator in JavaScript that is written at three dots. Hmm? So expand the object in, um, 
in its part. So let's see an example here that probably it's, it's easier. If I wrote let ex comma spread operator apps app, uh, way and equal to an array one, two, three, four, in x it will contain the first element one and in this will not contain two like in the previous slides the second element is matched with the second element after the equal it will contain an array with all the value up to the end in this case of the array so x will contain one and y will contain an array with two three four this is the spread operator um, and here you see another example you have an array that's called parts and you use the spread operator inside another array and this is spreading the array this is uh, the, comp the compressing the array in a way hmm? so here lyrics will have head shoulder knees and toes it has unzip the array in a way inside the, the new position and this is the spread operator and works both on left or right of the assignment operator like in this case uh, well it can also be used as an idiom to copy to create a copy on an array since you are spreading an array if you're spreading an array in a variable you are creating a copy of an array if you want as an alternative from array.from this is idiomatic but it can be used it's shorter than write array dot from a just spreading a inside an array create an array a new array with all the content spreading of the original array and finally but this is very very simple just just three three four slides strings so strings are immutable in javascript meaning that you cannot edit the content of a string once the string is created uh, the length of a string is the number of charter like in an array uh, the string uh, is indexed by zero like an array and the empty string has length ze zero like an array hmm? uh, there is no charter in javascript everything is a string a string of one letter is a string there is not a separate variable, a separate type for charters. And you can, as we said, define the literal strings with the single quote or the double quotes. Uh, you can pick hmm, a letter like from a string, like you did for an array. You can concatenate two strings with the plus operation, and you can get the length of a string with the length property. Not, note that it's written here, but it's made for an array too this is a property not a function not a method it doesn't have the parentheses it's just length not length open close parentheses just length it's a property not a not a method same for arrays string methods this is just copy and paste from the as a screenshot from the mozilla documentation uh, you have a method for getting the charter at a specific position to concatenate string, to slice string, to split strings in multiple portions, to join strings, hmm? not only with the plus method, other with other methods. Again, a lot of methods, common methods for string. And there are one last thing that is characteristics about string that is called template literal. Template literal, if you remember the first picture, we have seen that string as double quote single quote or the back tick so the back tick is uh, a valid way to define string and it's called the template literal because you can embed string defined that way in expression defined by dollars and square parentheses and then the value of the expression is interpolated and produced as a string so if you have let name bill that is a string of a name of a person named bill and then you define another variable with back tick so a string in which there is hello that is a string charter a word and then there is the symbol with name and name is the variable name it's not named the string is the variable name 
the result of this operation is a string that has inside a law plus the value of the string of the other variables mm? so a law build you can replicate this by writing hello as a string plus name that do the concatenation maybe a law space plus a string or you can also interpolate string in this way and this is useful for string formatting especially when you write a lot of code mm? you maybe imagine a web application welcome name of the user mm? you can say welcome and here put the variable that has the name of the user mm? and the other nice things about template literal is that they can span multiple lines so you can create a new line inside the template literal I, can you repeat Uh, well, per, per se, probably no. Yes or no? I mean, this name will be converted in a string. So, if you do some operation in JavaScript code, in this case, it will be converted in a string, and then it will be put in another string. And then, if this other string is used without validation, uh, etc., then can lead to the problem clearly. But like a concatenation, actually. okay so this is really the last slide and i, I run a little bit but these the last things weren't particularly hard to get i suppose uh, if you don't have any question if you have any question i'm stay here for a while if you don't have any question have a good rest of the day a good week and let's see uh, let's meet again on thursday uh, in the other room for continuing with the, the lecture about objects and functions